I don't think it's something that any of us can can compromise on, you know. And and true, um, it, it may be that, that there have to be changes in the way in which we are administering it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can't take my child to Achimota or Dogono and then leave him or her and drive away and can of Oriata not pay anything, whereas I can pay for 10 people. We need to so why did we, you implement we, it then? We, we need to question, well, we need to, you need to begin to get the data to then be discriminatory in how um, and who pays and who doesn't pay. But you could have done that before, Ken. If you, I, I'm, if, not if sure, you start, I'm not sure that we have... If you start with the free SHS and then now you are saying, okay, 90,000 have come on board, but there are a lot of people who have benefited who could have paid. Yeah. So why didn't you get the data before you started the policy? Now we're told we're going to have a multiple stream you of You're actually going to have maybe uh, 180,000 more people. Yeah. But Bernard, you, you know, the, I mean, each soul is important. You'd rather make that mistake to get, uh, if it is a mistake, to get everybody in the system for the nation to, to then begin to have a conversation and say, okay, uh, this is good for us because we want our human capital you know, to a certain level. But maybe let's begin to adjust it this way. Right, so you had the kind of foriata in that interview with Bernard Avle on City. Now, uh, I'll bring in Mr. Kodo and uh, Larry K. Agbodo. Uh, Larry, thank you very much for joining us. Great. Great. So, so you, you realize that the NDC used kind of foriata's statement to say, we are vindicated in the implementation. Now, they are not saying that they are going to go to an implementation yeah. that is, uh, takes away anybody. They, in fact, they are going to add on, as in yeah. private institutions. Yeah. The question has been money. And the, uh, 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 John Mahama has said recently that mm -hmm. it has been the money. Almost all the biggest part of the budget sunk into mm -hmm. uh, free SHS and other areas are suffering. Question we must ask them is, yeah. what happened to the question of the money, especially now that you are going to expand it? Sure. So uh, I think in the submission of Professor Abuchi, he made a statement that I really fell in love with, that look, a portion of our national life should not be subject to politics. And that is very, very true. That is a mistake we are making as a country. We've spoken enough on the free SHS, but I can tell you for a fact that the challenges we are facing in the free SHS now, in the next few months to come, we're going to face those same challenges in the colleges of education. The institutions that train our teachers for the basic schools. You know, as a country, we have taken our minds off uh, the colleges of education. And it is very wrong of us because these are institutions that train teachers for our busy school system. So if things go wrong at the busy school system, you surely expect that those students or those people that are going to graduate from the busy school to the senior high schools are going to take the same life that they took from the busy school to the secondary schools. I would like to delve more into issues of colleges of education because we have spoken extensively on the senior high schools. All right. The colleges of education, for instance, uh, hope you can go on, please. Yes, go on, go on. So, so let's take an issue of the trainee teachers allowance. In 2016, NDC stood firm that, look, whether hook or crook, we are not going to pay trainees, teachers, uh, the allowance. They stood, they stood very strongly on that. To the extent that even the uh, general secretary came out and stated that, look, if it will cost us to lose the elections, go ahead, don't vote for us, we'll not pay your allowance. But what are we seeing now? 2020, NDC has come back, and they are saying that, look, when we come back, we are going to maintain the status quo. We are going to continue with the payment of what? The trainee teachers allowance. For the past three years, 
government has spent over 432 million on the payment of training teachers allowance for the past three years. Now, when you go to the colleges of education, there are equally more important issues there, aside the payment of training teachers allowance. The past governments, in the past few years, you observe that almost every year, tutors in colleges of education go on strike. And they go on strike for about a month or two, and it affects the academic calendar. Just before I got onto this show this morning, I was on a WhatsApp platform, and tutors in colleges were arguing because even their book and research allowance is being paid in a way that they are not happy with. So it's being paid in budgets. So we have some who have received it long ago and some who have not received anything at all. So the manifestos of both parties, you realize that they are still going to push a lot of money into the payment of trainees' allowance. But is it worth it? We are talking of double track. Probably in November or early next year, colleges are likely to witness uh, the introduction of double track in training teachers also. Because due to the reforms that are ongoing in colleges of education, you know, in the past we had colleges awarding sets. So we had set A, set B. And it came to a time things got better and they are now awarding diploma. But as we speak now, there has been numerous reforms which has led to colleges now awarding degrees because colleges are now fully fledged universities. So they are more or less like satellite campuses of universities now that have been, so we have about 46 colleges of education that have been placed under five major universities in Ghana here. Now, in the past, you go there to do diploma and you stay on campus for three years. So you stay on campus for two years and you use your last year to go out for our program. That is not the case any longer because now you are spending four years on campus as a degree student. But for the past three, four years now, government has done not going to accommodate three, four year groups on campus, but there's no space on campus to take all of them. So that is what is not going to lead to the introduction of the double track in colleges also. But you observe that a huge sum of money has been spent on payment of trainees allowance. I'm not against that. I'm not against the payment of trainees allowance. In fact, if I should sit here today and say that government should abolish the payment of trainees allowance, you will see a chunk of trainees out there launching an attack on you. But as a nation, are we taking the right steps? Now, you all attest to the fact that in our various public universities, before you can be a lecturer there, you need to have at least a minimum MPhil or a doctorate degree. So it's the same thing that is now applying to the colleges also, because they are now fully fledged universities. The few tutors there who have been able to upgrade themselves, gotten their PhD degrees, those with MPhil, you observe that in the past years, immediately they get their PhD degrees. They move to their universities because those having doctorates and still in the colleges, they are not getting what is required of them. The, their conditions of service, they are not getting it. So someone goes, that's a top up through, through get fund support and other support systems. And immediately he's done with the PhD degree, he moves to the university, the, the mainstream university, because when he continues to stay in the college, he's not getting what is required of him because he's not a doctorate holder. So as a nation, something, and I will plead that your fellow panelists should also take a look into this issue. These are very serious concerns we should look at. If we take our minds off issues in the various colleges, then I think we are feeling ourselves as a nation. I see. But is it not the understanding that the, the even to allow for more space for work to go on in the colleges, uh, double tracking will also apply there? Good. That, that, that's a very good question. But we ask ourselves, 
Has it even been successful at the senior high schools? Fine, we all have our serious opinions on that. But with a system they are about to run in the colleges, this means that for a whole year, we are going to have only one year batch on campus. And we have the second and third years coming to campus to spend this six weeks or eight weeks and do a major part of their studies through virtual learning. We all attest to the fact that as a country, we were not even prepared for this virtual learning system until COVID came in. And you see, you can use but virtual COVID, learning COVID has in other areas. COVID has taught us how studies. to maximize the virtual learning. Is that not so? So what's our problem? Sure, sure. Good. So that's what I'm also saying, that as a country, we can use virtual learning in other fields of study. But when it comes to teaching, we should not make that the first choice. At least, that should be an option. Yes, it's a perfect option. Mm -hmm. But it should not be the first choice. Because if you are going to teach me how to uh, go out there and train students or peoples, at least there should not there should be room for practicality also and not just one way method of doing it like a whole semester 16 weeks was spent using virtual learning and students were called to campus just last two weeks to come and write exams most of these students were crying because majority of them could not take part in the virtual lessons in the next two years these are the people that are going to come out to train our peoples at the basic school system. Mm. And another topic that we should also look at in the manifesto, especially of NDC, is that when they come, they are going to cancel the teacher line teacher examinations, which is also a very critical point. It has just been suspended, at. right? You know, the line of... No. Are you said? Has it not been suspended? No, it has not been suspended. Okay. As we speak, it's ongoing. Okay. Even in the next two, three weeks, mm. uh, the batch that completed college a year ago will, will be writing their exams. Okay, so we talk about Lion is, is spoken about in the same breath as uh, national service for teachers, right? So, yes. Mm. Now, something you, you equally attest to the fact that the law mandates that every graduate of a tertiary institution must, what, must do a mandatory one-year service. Before are now fully fledged tertiary institutions. Any graduates of a college of education is either awarded a diploma. Those who are coming out now are coming out will be awarded what degree. So as a graduate of a special institution, you cannot say that, OK, since you are special, you are going to be exempted from what national service. Yeah. No. And what's, what's your issue about the cancellation and of I the line session? The NBC comes out. The, the, and speak, 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 to that, so speak to that as a final point, and let's move on. You, yes, line session, what's it? Good. Line session is not just something that is rolled out in Ghana here. As far back as 2010, in, I think in October 2010, the Africa Federation of uh, Teaching Councils was inaugurated. And what happened was that Ghana forms part of that federation. So the licensing of teachers falls for all countries in Africa. So the NDC should not be and advocating a cancellation, the right? Profession, that's your point. Not necessarily. Because this whole licensing thing started under their regime. This whole licensing started under the regime of NDC. This government only came to continue the process. And all professionals, almost all professionals, are licensed. Okay. Doctors are licensed. You, as mm -hmm. a lawyer over there, you are mm -hmm. licensed. So you should not say that we are going to cancel the licensure because students are complaining about the nature of the examinations you can find a way of modifying it but not total cancellation of it all right thank you very much uh, larry k abgado and uh, we take our final break we'll be right back <laughs>